We'll go ahead and get started with the uh, regional champions and Mississippi State Bulldogs in their press conference. Head coach Chris <coughs> Monis is joined by Jake Mangum, Rowdy Jordan, and Peyton Plumley. Coach, we'll have you make an opening statement, then we'll take questions for the student athletes. After we dismiss the student athletes, we'll go back with questions for Coach. The floor is yours when you're ready. Thank you. Uh, great night. Um, atmosphere, the, the way we played, the way they played. I mean, you got to tip your hat to Miami. Very talented team that, man, they, they spent about the last 12 hours on that field. Um, but, man, our guys, I thought our starter, Peyton Plumley, was awesome. And then all the guys who ran out of the bullpen did their job, <clears throat> played great defense. And uh, some clutch hitting. I mean, we, we faced some really good arms tonight. I thought they threw some guys with, with really good stuff, and we just had some big hits. And um, nice to get Jake back in the mix. He was a big part of tonight uh, with some bigs. I'd, the last couple nights we've been talking bad about you, so no, you're good. But Jake was awesome tonight, and um, just a fun night at the ballpark. <laughs> Again, we, uh, we have two microphones here for you. Megan's to my left, Carmen's to my right. We'll start with Steve in the middle, then we'll go to Joel. Jake, uh, four for four with uh, Super Regionals in your career, and you're part of the only program in the country to make Super Regionals four years in a row. Uh, your thoughts on that accomplishment when you look back over your – Legacy here. Well, I, it's. I mean, I like to think I helped, but it, it was. Uh, it took a team effort all four years. You know, uh, freshman year we were loaded, big leaders all over the field. Sophomore year was Brent Rooker's historical year. Uh, junior year was a crazy ride, and this year we, you know, it's just it's going really smoothly all year. Um, you know, it's been a crazy four years, but uh, uh, that's because of the boys in the locker room. That's not just me, but it's it's uh, awesome and. Uh, Look to keep going and staying hot. We'll go to Joel, third row in the middle. Jake, you hit the 35-foot tapper in front of the plate and beat it out at first base. I mean, what's the? Uh, is there a weight lifted off your shoulders there? Did you feel different in the rest of your bats, the rest of the night to kind of get that skid <coughs> out of the way? Just kind of what goes through your mind during during the infield single and then the rest of the night? I mean, it was. Um, it, it's just funny how baseball works, man. Uh, Coach Lamonis comes up here last night, says we're looking for a you know Jake type hit, which I took offense to. It's all right, <laughs> but uh, you, you know, get a lot of other good ones, but those yeah, you get some yeah, of those yeah, too. Yeah. So, but uh, you know, it, baseball's weird. You know, right before I started struggling, I remember an article came out and there was a couple quotes from me saying, you know, if you keep playing hard, good things will happen. And then this this the scuffle started, and um, you know, the past four games or. Prior to tonight, the past four games haven't gone my way in the box, but you know, you know, we won two games in a regional. So I mean, I was I was happy as can be, and uh, you know, I'd stay true to who I am. If you play the game the right way, play hard, good things are going to happen. And uh, I hit a ball 20 feet or four feet, and beat it out. And baseball is the weird game it is. I started finding some barrels. We'll go to Tyler in front of Peyton here. Joel asked about the infield hit to the pitcher, but how good did that double feel? Because that, and I know you had the single in between those, but the double was the first one, like you said, that you really got a, a good barrel on it. Yeah. Um, well, after the infield hit, uh, the second hit was was my bread and butter hit. Six hole, <clears throat> give what they or take what they give me. You know, ball on the outside part of the plate. Uh, third baseman's playing in to cover the bunt. They're going to give me the six hole. That's just what I do. And when I got that hit, that was the one that was like, all right, you're back to the basics. Well, you know, let's start rolling. And then, I, you know, the next at bat was, uh, was a big one uh, because I knew Westburg was going to get the job done. Um, everyone on our team is going through scuffles. But the one thing that everyone has done is kept a positive attitude because we've been winning all year. You know, it's, it's, it's miserable to be str like struggling and losing. But when you're winning, <coughs> man, it, it's easy to stay positive. And, uh, and that's, that's a testament to the guys in the locker room. We'll go to Steve here, and then we'll go in front of him to Ben. Peyton, your team went to Omaha last year without you, and here you are tonight closing out a regional championship game and uh, one of your final starts at Duty Noble Field. What's, what's the past year meant to you? Um, <clears throat> the past year was, uh, was pretty tough on uh, myself and my family. Um, but I knew that uh, this is the place that I wanted to be, and, and looking at other options was, was not going to be an option for me. Uh, I give a lot of credit to Coach Lamonis for having the faith and bringing me back, uh, having the faith in me all year, even though probably countless times I, I showed him that, I, that he shouldn't have faith in me. But uh, he kept his head up. I kept my head up. And, and playing in front of these fans one more year has, has meant the absolute world to me and my family. And, and I, I give all credit to the guys and all the coaches. 
great. And this week, obviously, you didn't pitch in the SEC. You didn't get a start in the SEC tournament. How did you kind of stay fresh going into this start after not getting a start in basically two weeks? Well, uh, <clears throat> nothing really changes uh, between the lines with, with practice. Uh, you know, I still have to get my work in no matter what. I did get a chance to come in and, and pitch against Vanderbilt uh, for kind of a bullpen, so uh, that helped too. And obviously, being in front of that uh, environment in Hoover helped prepare for this weekend. And uh, preparation leading up to this week, nothing really changed for me. Just just uh, staying true to myself and knowing what was going to work for me moving forward. We'll go to Logan on the uh, far left. Router, you've had some accolades over the first your first two years here, freshman All-American, things like that. But there was a lot of talented players took that field this weekend. You were named the, the, the MVP. What did that mean to you? Um, I mean, it just means a lot, you know. Had a good weekend, had three wins, um, you know, battled through some adversity in the beginning of the year. But, um, you know, to be the MVP this weekend it just means a lot that, um, you know, like Jake said, play hard and, you know, good things are going to happen. And, and, that's what I've been doing, and you know, it just feels good. We'll go to the back of the cameras with Tom. Peyton, obviously coming into this one, Miami put up 10 runs in, I think, three straight games. What was your approach with them coming into this, and what was working for <coughs> uh, Well, looking at Miami's lineup, it kind of uh, resembled a lot to a team like Arkansas, who's super aggressive, and, and you know, you had to make good pitches to, to good hitters when, they, when you got a lineup full of them. Uh, I knew that the best way to be effective for myself was going to be able to was to move the two seam down in the zone and keep it away from them because I know they're going to be big and aggressive and trying to pull the ball and uh, trying to hit home runs and doubles all night. Uh, I knew that if I can stay away from them and I can keep the ball down in the zone and make them move it to the defense, we've played great defense, uh, you know, the past, this whole year really. And uh, I give a lot of credit to those guys behind me, but just seeing a lot of the big swings and, and taking advantage of their aggressiveness and and uh, trying to get those guys out in three pitches or less. We'll go ahead back to Tyler here in the front. Peyton, what was it like waiting around all day for an 8 p.m. start and probably one of the biggest starts of your career? And then did you get the sense of how important this game meant to, to everybody that was there today when you were walking off the mound there in, in the sixth, I think it was? Yeah, uh, well. <clears throat> slept till four. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, did, I did sleep till about 12 o'clock. So I got some good rest. But uh, it's funny, I was talking to Coach Fox all before the game, and I, I told him that, you know, usually when I get to the field, I start kind of getting the jitters just leading up to any start that would be or any game really. And I told him today I felt really comfortable for some reason and I didn't have those nerves just because, you know, just the comfortability with our guys, the way they were hitting the ball. I knew that if I, if I went into the game and, and kept it close and gave us a shot to win, the, the bats are going to pick me up and that's exactly what happened. We'll go back again to the cameras and Tom, and then we'll go over to the front and Ben. Hey, again, you mentioned the infield and uh, multiple, I think three double play balls were turned tonight. For a pitcher, I don't know how many were turned while you were on the mound, but what does that do for you on the hill in terms of confidence, having those guys being able to turn that in tough spots? Well, not only does it give does it give me a lot of confidence and a lot of momentum, but it, it gives our offense a lot of momentum. And any time you can turn a double play to get out of an inning, you get the crowd into it, you get the whole team into it, and ultimately <coughs> it, uh, it crumbles the other team. And it, and, it, and it puts a lot of pressure on them. And, you know, when you play in an environment like this, it's an environment like no other. And it's really hard to play when you got all you got 11,000 people yelling behind you. Again, to Ben, we got time for a couple more for the players, and then we'll go to questions for Coach. Jake, you talked all kind of week leading up to it. Talk, wanted to pack the house and bring people out there, live up to your expectations, and uh, what was it like getting out there with the, the new field? It didn't shock me, you know. Uh, we hosted a uh, regional and a super regional my freshman year, and, and they packed the place out, you know. Um, the Mississippi State baseball, is, it means a lot to the people. Um, and, man, they, they came and they were loud. Um, you know, it... it you can't even like describe how much it helps. Uh, college baseball, you don't have stadiums like this, and um, you know when you get opposing teams come in here, it, it, it almost shell shocks you. You know, I mean, like, I'm still not used to it. Like today, I mean, or last night, I remember like that first at bat, I was like, oh my gosh, this place is insane. It, I mean, it, it just erupted, and um, it, it, it helps a lot. And uh, and we got to ask them again. We we'll see y'all Friday night. Um, we need everybody to show up and, and help us get back to Omaha. Like uh, it, it, their presence matters. Like it does, and and, uh, and it's, it's a big reason why we're here. Anything else for the student athletes? We'll wrap it up here with Hunter, and then we'll let the uh, student athletes go. Um, so Rowdy, uh, in the bottom of the ninth, he had that catch, just the second out, and he almost dropped it. Was there kind of nerves there? Or? 
kind of explain what was happening. I mean, that ball is the highest ball I've ever seen hit in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was running after it, and I was like, I looked over to Jake. One month, one, you know, I didn't really want to catch it that bad. And um, Jake looked at me and said, take it, take it, take it. I said, I'm like, take oh, it. Oh, great. Bro. He don't want it, so I guess I'm going to have to catch it. Um, I just felt like it wasn't going to come down, but um, <laughs> made the catch at the end, and it, was, it felt good to get the second out. So it was, it was fun. All right, thank you, guys. Congratulations. We'll see you next weekend. Thank you all. Hell State. Appreciate you all. Go ahead and get rolling with questions for Coach. Again, raise your hand. We'll start with this gentleman here. Uh, in the middle row to coach's right. Obviously, you're not new to uh, regionals, obviously, <clears throat> but uh, when you think back to when you got here, uh, you know, this is part of the plan at Mississippi State, uh, and it's played out to today, it's played out like you would like, but can you describe what it is like? Is it what you imagined it to be? Everything and more. Just, um, and it's just not tonight. It's Friday night when we played LSU, just our, our fans and our ballpark and our atmosphere, it's the pinnacle of college baseball. Um, I know there's some other great places, but there's none better than Duty Noble. And um, it was just a lot of fun to compete. Um, when you get those big hits in those moments, it's just, uh, it feels like the place is rocking. We'll go ahead and get it to uh, Brett here in the front to coach's right. I know you didn't want to go to Cole today, but you ended up giving him the, the ninth inning. What, what made you change your mind? It's what, and what does it say about him that he didn't really come here as a, as a pitcher? He was a hitter first, but now he's at a point where he can take three straight games in a regional. This is my fifth year as a head coach, and I'm sitting in the dugout in the ninth inning and shaking my head saying I shouldn't have said anything at the media last night, right? Because everybody's saying, oh, God, Cole's throwing. But I'm walking through, and I always do my walkthrough during BP and just check on the pitchers. And I asked, uh, I always, him and Lee Belt are always standing together. And Cole goes, Coach, I feel better today than I did yesterday. And so I was put a little hop in my step. And uh, Leibs got exhausted in that one inning. I mean, the one inning he had to really fight through. Um, and when he came out and uh, watching Cole's warm-up pitches, he was as good or better than the two nights before. So we're glad to have him. He's such a tough kid. I'm just glad he's on our team. We'll go ahead to uh, Ben in the front row to coach's <clears throat> left, and then we'll go to Joel in the third row. Could you get a couple of really big innings from Tristan and Colby right there in the middle? Um, for, first off, I mean, Colby gets the double play ball and to kind of sort that inning out, and uh, obviously a good inning from Tristan as well. I mean, how important were those guys tonight? They were all, they've been big for us all year. That, that element that we can match you up in our bullpen, and um, Tristan's had some really good bullpens this week. And, you know, um, sitting there today, you sit in your office and you're watching that game, and um, – at Miami, that lineup, and it's a bunch of young guys, it is a really good lineup. And I thought our pitching coach, Scott Foxhall, he did an unbelievable job today, and all our pitchers did a great job. I mean, Peyton Plumley, man, he pitched. I mean, it was kind of – it was hard to take him out because he had been so good, but we knew the matchup was there, and uh, it worked out for us. But Peyton, um, just the way we pitched him and, and the ability to keep the ball down in the zone because there's some scary hitters in that lineup. We'll go ahead and get it to Joel, third row in the middle. I know you, you guys have full confidence in Jake, but was it like a, the world was lifted and everything was right in the world when you see Jake get a hit and then he just one after the other after that? Yeah, he um, – and the at-bat that he had the double, I turned to Jake. I said, he, he's out of it now. We were thinking about bunting. Marshall walked, I got, you know, right there, and we talked about it. I said, do I bunt him? And then we looked at each other and said, no, nah, he's – Jake's back. And so – and then next pitch, he hits the ball in the gap. Um, I'm just happy for him. You know, he is – Everything he says, he's the epitome of, of a, a ball player. And he just, he deserves to be able to enjoy this time. And it was hard watching him fight through it. You're at the, your senior year and you're, you're competing. And he is the ultimate competitor. And we knew he'd fight out of it. I mean, I, like I, I said it last night, he's been really good in his work. And um, it was just a point of getting that one hit to get it off his back. We'll go ahead and get it to uh, Steve here in the middle second row. Coach, uh, usually you have multiple coaching changes. Things aren't going real well, but Mississippi State's had four and now headed their fourth Super Regional. What does that say about the culture of Mississippi State? You better win? Or no, is that a uh, it, – it's the it's, – it's coaches get too much credit probably in, at both times. It, it's about the ball players. We have great players here. Um, man, we, we've, we've really worked hard, but um, – and we hope to continue just to have great players in the program. And players win games, not coaches. Um, we keep them out of trouble sometimes and keep them moving in the right direction. But um, I was very fortunate to walk into a program that had a great culture with some really good players, and um, we've enjoyed coaching them. Go back to the second row to the coach's right. You know, it seemed like this game, particularly in this regional, was the kind of game you see 
this time of year, combination of pitching, timely hitting, defense. Did you sense that as well? I, I did. And, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of, you know, you're hoping for one of those, those two teams in front of you have a blowout. We run out there and a the guy's throwing 94, 95 miles an hour. And, I mean, pitching, I mean, their guy was really good tonight and their bullpen, and I felt like our guys were really good, and you were locked in a game. I mean, it was two of the better teams in the country, and they were fighting it out, and fortunately for us, we came out on top. Got time for a couple more for Coach, and then we'll get Miami in here. Coach, with a strikeout team, a power fly ball kind of pitching staff, you don't get a lot of double play opportunities over the course of the season, but how confident were you on those ground balls in the middle that the guys were rolling that you get those turn twos? I'm really comfortable with those. You know, Justin Foscue, and probably shame on me for playing him at third early in the year, but moving him to second base has been a huge part of our, you know, our defense getting a little bit better because he's just he's very comfortable there and he's really good at the double play. He turned a couple yesterday, and um, we turned a couple today, and and he's just he's played really well in West. He's been solid all year, but the ability to turn the double play is huge. We'll wrap it up with Brian. Uh, looking ahead to next weekend, do you feel comfor comfortable that JT Gann will be back in the rotation for you? I can't answer that at this point. Um, uh, you know, he's just in rehab right now, so we'll figure it out. We'll, we have enough arms, but we'll, uh, we'll see where he's at. But I, I, don't, I couldn't even tell you. I don't have an answer. Thanks, Coach. We'll uh, see you next weekend. Thank you all.